Hello, my dear student. Welcome to another edition of your mathematics lesson. Today, we are going to take another fresh and interesting new topic that is quadratic equation. And what we are going to learn first in this minute topic is how to solve the quadratic equation using general formula. So let's begin. After completing the very lesson today, my dear student will be able to find the solution of a quadratic equation using general formula. This is what I will be able to do after completing the very lesson today. As usual, my dear student, we have ever read a segment of the lesson, Mercy Safan. Today, I'm happy to give you another interesting number. This number is 53. 53 is so special, so amazing, so interesting. In fact, I'll tell you what is special about this number 53 after completing my lesson today, so don't go away. To begin the lesson, my dear student, let us learn the rule. It is this rule that will guide us what we need to do in order to solve the quadratic equation using this general formula. So let us learn the rules. Rule number one says rewrite the given quadratic equation in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. This is the general form of quadratic equation. So in case the terms are not arranged like this, with zero by the right hand side, you have to rearrange that very quadratic equation into this format. When that is now done, number two is to determine the value of A, B, and C. Those A, B, and C are nothing but the coefficients. A is the coefficient of the square term. B is the coefficient of the letter the term, while C is the constant term. When now that is now done, you now substitute those values for A, B, and C into this very formula. This is the general formula, x equals to minus B plus O minus root of B square minus 4AC all over 2E. This is the general formula, ACTC. This formula that you're going to substitute the values that you have determined in the this step number 2. That is your A, B, and C from the quadratic equation. After substituting, finally, you now simplify. So whatever you have finally will now be the roots or the solution of that very quadratic equation. We are going to take examples how we can make use of this very formula and find the solution of a given quadratic equation. So let's move. Example number one is say solve the, this quadratic equation 4y square equals to 12y minus 9. Solution to this very problem. You can see in this quadratic equation is now letter y instead x. So it doesn't matter. So that x is now y in this case. So let me just move. So what step number one says, I should rewrite this very quadratic equation in the form of that ax square plus bx plus c equals to zero. That is, we like to have zero by the right hand side, all other terms by the left. So let me do that. Copying the quadratic equation first. So I'll now rearrange. So to rearrange or to rewrite this into general format, I will now shift this 12y to the left. This minus 9 also I'll shift it to the left. So that I will now have 0 by the right. Let me do that. So after doing that, you now have 4y square minus 12y. This 12y shifted to the left becomes negative. The minus 9 shifted to the left becomes positive equals to zero. So step number two says we have to determine the values of A, B, and C, where A is the coefficient of the square term, B is the coefficient of the letter the term, while C is the constant term. So in this case, my A will be four, look at it, the coefficient of the square term. My B will now be minus 12, that is the coefficient of this letter the term, and the C is always the constant term. In this case, it is positive 9. So I'll now write my formula. That is the general formula that I'm going to substitute this A, B, and the C. This is the general formula. It says Y equals to minus B plus or minus root of B square minus 4AC all over 2A. So I'm now going to substitute appropriately this A, B, and the C. So substituting, if done correctly, you now have minus minus 12 plus or minus root of minus 12 square minus 4 times 4 times 9 all over 2 times 4. This is the substitution. So I'm going to simplify. So in attempt to simplify this, I'll begin with what is in the root. 
I have a minus 12 square, meaning minus 12 times another minus 12. And this part is C, minus 4 times 4 times 9. Let me just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to have uh, 12. This 12 is a result of this minus, minus will change it to plus, so I have 12 here. Minus 12 square gives me this 144. And the minus 4 times 4 times 9 is what gives me this 144. And the 2 times 4 is what gives me this 8. So I'll continue. Still, what is in the root 144 minus 144? That will give answer 0. So I'm going to have y equals to 12 plus or minus root of 0 all over 8. Square root of 0 will be 0. So I'm going to have uh, 12 plus or minus 0 all over 8. Uh, and addition of 0 and subtraction of 0 is still the same. So I'm going to have my 12. So this is now going to be 12 all over 8. The roots of this very quadratic equation, that is y equals to 3 over 2. 3 over 2 is now resolving this into simpler form. 12 can be divided by 4 to get this 3. 8 can be divided by 4 to get this 2. So we we'll now write 3 over 2 twice. So this is a repeated root. Quadratic equation must have two roots, two solutions. So to that, we now write this a single root. We now write it twice, meaning it is a repeated root. So this is the solution of this very quadratic equation. Let us move and take another example. Example number two says so solve the quadratic equation 9x squared plus 18x minus 17 equals to zero. And the question says we have to leave our answer in solve form. So solution to this very problem, what we do first is to copy down that quadratic equation. So step number one says we have to rewrite this quadratic into the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. Look at this very quadratic equation. Already it is in that format. So step one will now be skipped. So I'll now move to step number two. Step number two says I'm to determine the value of a, b, and c. Remember, a is the coefficient of the square term. b is the coefficient of that letter, the term, while the c is the constant term. So my a in this case is now going to be 9. My b is going to be 18, the coefficient of the letter, the term. And the c is the constant term, in this case is minus 17. So I'll now write my general formula. That I'm going to substitute these three values there. My general formula, remember, is x equals to minus b plus or minus uh, root of b square minus 4ac all over 2a. You have to commit this very formula into your memory. So substituted in this very formula, a by 9, b by 18, and c by this minus 17, I'm going to have uh, minus 18 plus or minus uh, root of uh, 18 square minus 4 times 9 times minus 17 all over 2 times 9. I have replaced the A, look at it here by 9. Replaced this C by minus 17. I replaced this B by 18 here and here. So I will now simplify. I have finished substituting. So what I am going to do next is to simplify. So I will start with what is in the root. 18 square, I'll now find what is 18 square. And also do this multiplication of minus 4 by 9 by minus 17. And also do this multiplication of 2 by 9. If that is now done correctly, you now have uh, minus 18, which I just uh, copied. Plus or minus uh, 18 square will now be 324. Minus 4 times 9 times minus 17 is what gives you this positive 612. And 2 times 9 gives you this 18. So I'll continue. So I'm now going to add what is in this square root. So addition of 3, 2, 4, and 6, 1, 2 correctly will now give answer 9, 3, 6. I copied my minus 18 and I copied my 18 below. So what I'm going to do, I'll now simplify what is inside this square root. That is this root of 936. The simplification of this will now be 6 root 26. That is, this 936 is the same thing as 36 multiplied by 26. And 36 is a perfect square number, so it can come outside to give you this number 6. So this is the simplification of root of 936. I'll continue. 
So still check between this numerator, that is minus 18, and this 6, you can factor something out. That 6 can be factored out. So you're now going to have 6 outside. When that 6 is now factored out, you now have minus 18 divided by 6 is what gives you this minus 3. And this 6 root 26 divided by 6 that I factored out is what just give me root of 2 root 26 then over 18 you can see this 6 and this 18 can be reduced to 6 and 6 1 6 and 18 it will now be 3 so you are now going to have a minus 3 plus or minus root of 26 all over 3 and this is where you are going to stop because the question says you have to leave your answer in sort form this root 26 i cannot but if the question says uh, you have to leave your answer in decimal then you have to find the value of this root 26 and move appropriately by saying plus uh, that value divided by 3 or minus that value divided by 3. So this is the solution of this very quadratic equation. This is the end of this very lesson, my dear student. I hope with the few examples given, you'll be able to find the solutions of quadratic equations using the general formula. Let me just move quickly to the last segment, Mars is fun. But I explain what is interested about the number 53. 53 is says it's the same as it is reversed in base 16. That is this 53. If you convert it to base 16, the result you are going to have, if you look at it critically, to be exactly reverse of 53. 53, if you convert it to base 16, remember how to convert a number from base 13 to any other base. So if this is converted to base 16 correctly, you're going to have 35, that is uh, 35 in base 16. And this 35, if you look at this 53, they will now be reverse of each other. So this is what is interesting of this number 53, which I believe is not a heavy number that when you convert it to whatever base, the result will now be reverse of each other. Thank you for your attention. We see more of these interesting things in mathematics in our subsequent lessons.